Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. One of the things that I like to do in each of my introductory astronomy classes is to begin the class with the astronomy picture of the day from the NASA website that is apod.nasa.gov apod. And today's picture for February 23rd of 2022. Well, it is titled Orion over Green Bank. So what do we see here? On the foreground, we see the Robert C. Byrd Green Bank Telescope. And this is the largest telescope that can be steered and change its direction. So it's actually movable. Now you don't get the sense of how large it is perhaps here, but that is over about 100 meters in size, the size of a football field that is being steered. So here it's pointing almost straight up, but that could be directed to point in other directions as well. And this is the largest telescope of any size, which is fully steerable. Now there are other telescopes. We used to have the Arecibo uh, telescope, which collapsed uh, down in Puerto Rico. Uh, that was three times this size, but could not be steered and was built into the valley of the mount a valley uh, in the mountainous region. And there is the new fast telescope in China, which is 500 meters in size. But that one cannot again cannot be steered at that size. We need the Earth to use the Earth as support. Now, this is an example of a radio telescope and we have the telescope there and we have an image of the Orion region of the sky up in up above. Radio telescopes are different than optical telescopes, first of all, and they, they observe a different part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And also because they can be used 24 seven radio telescopes can observe during the day. Because while the sky is bright in visible light, it is still dark in radio waves as long as you don't go too close to the sun. So objects can be observed 24 seven with the radio telescope and even through clouds radio waves will penetrate the clouds as well. So even things like rain or snow as long as they're not super heavy and of course things like thunderstorms will cause interference in the uh, with the radio telescope. But other than that the telescope radio telescopes give us a different picture on the universe. Now up in the sky, we do see the Orion region, as I mentioned, and we can label some of those regions for you, including the bright star Betelgeuse up at the top, and then Bellatrix over to the right hand side. Those are the two of two of the brighter stars within Orion. Down towards the lower left, we see the belt of Orion and below that Orion Nebula, which is a star forming region and one of the very nearby well studied star forming regions. And then we see Barnard's loop, a loop of gaseous material kind of stretching around and through the constellation of Orion. So we can see a whole a number of different things that we have that we can study there. And some of those things have been studied with the Green Bank Telescope, which looks at the molecular clouds in Orion. Some of the regions are very bright here, but there are also very dark regions, which do not emit a lot of visible light and need longer wavelengths like the radio waves that are then able to penetrate and give us a look into those regions. So to better understand the molecular clouds around Orion and the star formation that is just beginning there where we're seeing the later stages of that in the Orion Neb in Nebula. So that was our picture of the day for February 23rd of 2022. It was titled Orion over Green Bank. We'll be back again tomorrow for the next picture previewed to be colorful stars. So we'll see what that is about tomorrow. And until then have a great day everyone. And I will see you in class.